All right, so before we go on, there's something I have to resolve that I didn't realize uh, I was supposed to do. So those little symbols here on the um, next to the story missions, <clears throat> we aren't supposed to, for Imperial Commander 2, one of the things you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take all of the agenda side missions and shuffle them together into a deck, and then you're supposed to click this icon every time you see it on one of the missions you just completed uh, to see if <clears throat> you're supposed to draw it as a side mission. Uh, we didn't do that, so I'm just going to go ahead and do both because I realized that it's going to—it would change the difficulty, and I don't want to make it less difficult than it's supposed to be. So let's go ahead and do it and see what happens. So we just, we're supposed to draw a agenda mission, and of course we're not going to be able to play it. So the Empire is just going to get the reward right away. So let's see what it gets. Oops. Dubious disposition. And the reward is Maul. Okay, so Maul will be a reward for that one. And then the other one is nothing happens. Okay. So the way that we'll implement that is we'll go to... And then, by the way, we're going to be playing... Um, <clears throat> the story mission for this one's going to be History Repeats. Uh, I think we actually had a tie as far as the votes went in the comments, at, at least up till now. But I went ahead and peeked at the maps for these. And the other one, Enemies Closer, I feel like I've definitely seen it before multiple times. I think I've played that mission several times before. But this one doesn't look quite as familiar, so I want to play the one that doesn't look as familiar. So I'm going to be playing hard, and then since the um, Empire is going to get the Maul villain, we're going to click on the villains box right here and we're gonna find Maul. There he is and he's gonna be a villain now added to the Imperials forces. <clears throat> okay and then with that I think we are ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read the enemy or history repeats card. So, Lorne lays out a blueprint on an ancient manuscript in front of you. I've been able to narrow down the possible hiding places for the shard, but I need to be on site for a final analysis, he says, pointing to various locations. I know it will be dangerous, but you must get me inside. Once we're there, I'm sure I'll be able to find the shard and we can ensure its safety. <clears throat> Alright, here we go. Okay, so we'll reveal the map here. <clears throat> it's close, Lorne whispers as you silently enter the ancient Jedi Temple. The Jedi Council wanted to keep the shard close, even if hidden. Think of it. The Force essence of dozens, maybe hundreds of beings, all concentrated into one object. Think of what one could do with even a sliver of that kind of power. He speaks with a terrified awe in his voice. Okay, we're going to deploy the heroes to the blue space. Alright, let's take a look at our map here. So there's nothing going on, so we're just going to have to deploy blind, it looks like. So we've got our deployment set up. We've got Jin here, so that she's going to be closest. It looks like we're going up to the northeast. <clears throat> She'll be closest to the action and able to get line of sight for a uh, quick draw. And then I've got Jared and Dracotta, uh, second closest, kind of the second row going to the northeast, uh, just because they need to be able to get minimum movement so they can attack. And then Kotun is going to be the moving probably the most, thanks to Opportunist and um, her other abilities, plus she's a little less strain heavy and, a, and not a melee figure like Jared. So let's move on to the next part. Place the following token. Okay, I thought that might have been a figure, but we'll put that under Dracotta for now. <clears throat> Lorne looks anxious and excited at the same time. The Imperial Mission token represents Lorne. Lorne is a neutral figure. Hero adjacent to Lorne can spend one movement point to push Lorne up to two spaces. Okay. Hey, so uh, Editor TV Boy here. So. 
during this mission, I totally messed up and played it wrong. Lorne is a figure, which means he should be blocking um, ending movement and blocking line of sight and not be able to inter overlap other figures. Uh, I think I messed it up because we they, the app told me to deploy first and then put the token underneath one of my figures that was already there. I don't know why I've been so careful about not um, about making sure I, I, I respect when a piece is a figure and not a token but yeah it's gonna get played wrong this mission and apologize for the for that anyway bye. there's an unknown number of secret passages in this temple that allowed the Jedi to move unseen between chambers Lauren explains some of those may still yet be intact all right we've got some tokens all of the tokens are already on the map already they're already preset in vassal thankfully but we'll just take note of where they are Face down neutral mission tokens represent secret passages. A rebel figure on a secret passage can spend three movement points to place his figure as close as possible to another space with a secret passage. If Lorne is on a secret passage, a hero adjacent to him can spend two movement points to place him as close as possible to another space with a secret passage. Okay, we've got a terminal, another terminal, and another terminal. So three, oh, four terminals, okay. <clears throat> we can only hope there's still some data in the terminals here, Lorn says. When Lorne enters a space with a terminal, the heroes claim that terminal. Interesting. The mission will progress when all terminals have been claimed. The rebels lose at the end of round 6, or when all heroes are wounded. And look, there's no bad guys, so this should be totally easy. The eerie ambience of the deserted temple is broken by a shout. Freeze! From a stormtrooper. And a blaster bolt whizzing past. A firefight, firefight quickly erupts, and you push Lorne to the ground for cover. Keep me safe, he yells as blasters continue to fire. You will never find it without my help. Okay. Here we go. Ooh, elite stormtroopers. Okay. Okay. An elite riot trooper. They will die. And an officer. All right, it's time to go. All right, importantly, uh, we have some start of mission effects to resolve, uh, mainly uh, with Jin Odan. <clears throat> the supply pack is going to give her two power tokens. They can actually be any type, but I think we're just going to go for the damage power tokens. <clears throat> and those are going to be important. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's it. So. We're going to start off with <coughs> uh, Jared, actually. I think that makes sense because there's not as much blast to do. So we're going to go ahead and activate Jared. Also, always great to have Jax uh, make his appearance as early as possible. So we're going to use Droid Mastery. We're also going to use forward momentum, which we need to remember now um, also triggers when we're attacked, and we use parry, we also get one movement point. Uh, could be really useful for this mission too, because we need to get Lorne to all four of these terminals, which are all scattered around this map, and we have to do it really bef way before the halfway point of the mission, because um, it's going to end at the end of round six, so... Uh, and it only progresses, and only Lorne can analyze each of these terminals. So, let's go with Jared. One, two, three. And I think we're going to have to go for the attack on... Actually, let's... Hmm, if we go for the Stormtrooper, then they will likely hit even harder with their final stand ability. Just program it to the app. So let's go for this um, riot trooper, and we'll let Jin quick draw the other riot trooper. So where are my dice? There we go. So we're going to be focused with a blue die, and it's going to be doing plus one damage now instead of just uh, pierce one because we've got the X8 upgrade from our last side mission. <coughs> dice. Wow, five minus one. So four damage to this ride trooper. I mean, yeah, who needs a weapon with 
with Jared doing this much. Um, I actually don't want to... Well, I guess we can't attack again, so that's fine. So Jared will activate. He gets one movement point from forward momentum. Let's go ahead and strain move and go here, here, and then we'll attack this uh, riot trooper with the gaffy stick. has Pierce one, and we can use Jax here to add plus one. Um, let's see. Bring Jax down here. Okay, but right now we're doing four damage, minus two, so two damage, and unfortunately that's going to leave us one short on finishing this guy off. They have seven health. Um, let's see, we didn't give him the power pack, but we can surge for a block token. Do that. And then let's just attack again, and then I guess we can finish this guy off. Okay, so that kills him, and we've got two surges, so we're going to recover a strain and get another power token. And mark off that he's been defeated. We have one movement point left, so let's keep going this way. Actually, maybe we don't want to block off line of sight. I guess we'll go this way then, just in case, like, uh, Kotun wants to take that guy out from here. Okay, and that is it for Jared. All right, Imperial Officer. First Imperial attack during this activation gets plus one surge. And then another Imperial figure with figure cost three or less attacks Kotun. Nobody can attack Kotun. So I think that means, in fact, I don't think anybody can attack anybody except for the Stormtroopers attacking Jared. Uh, but let's do that. We'll have this Stormtrooper attack Jared with plus one surge. And Jared will go ahead and spend the block token. Might as well, because we're going to keep getting more. Okay, so we're looking at two surges and three damage. I think we'll go ahead and parry with the gaffy stick. Oh yeah, we don't have to resource, we can just do this. Um, so we'll add a block. If we add a, a surge cancel, it doesn't help us because we'll have another surge. So we're going to take two damage from that. <clears throat> and then move one to attack Kotun. That is not happening, but he could attack uh, Jared from here, so we'll go ahead and do that. I'm not going to spend a power token on this because I don't think he's going to make accuracy. Four, does he have a surge? He has a surge for accuracy, but he's not getting any damage through. And then if adjacent to another figure, Imperial figure, the adjacent non-focused Imperial figure with the highest figure cost becomes focused. So that guy's going to be focused. Okay, and now moving back to the Rebels kind of thinking I want to just go with Jin actually. Here's what we're do we'll do. We'll activate uh, Jin Odon. We'll go ahead and start off with an attack. We're going to spend one of her power tokens and we're going to use the power charger to double that. Oh, I need a uh, activation marker. There we go. So we'll exhaust that to double it. <clears throat> plus two damage, and yeah, let's do this with the DL44. Oh, we forgot to use Jax. That's okay. We'll use him on the next one. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Minus two is six. One, two, three. So we can go ahead and use the... Oh, we also have the plasma cell on us, so we're going to pierce one. So it looks like we one-shotted this riot trooper, which is pretty nuts now. Um, oh, what we shouldn't have done... No, that's okay. So we'll... Uh, yeah, we'll defeat the riot trooper. And now we have a bunch of effects to resolve. We're going to get cocky to become focused. 
uh, we're going to use Sidewinder to move here. We're going to use Opportunist from Kotun to oh, move one space. Okay, so we'll do that. And then we also could have done op Opportunist with Jin. Um, unfortunately, it just puts us into more danger, really. But uh, you know what? Maybe. Maybe that's fine. Maybe instead of going here, we'll go here. And then we can try and take out this uh, this Stormtrooper with our second attack. So we'll go ahead and spend the uh, power token. And it's not going to double this time, but this guy has less health. So Also, we didn't have to use the spread barrel, so we've got it here still. We've also got Pierce 1 from the Plasma Cell. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 4 damage, so we can use the Spread Barrel here. Oh, we're focused, actually. Let's not use the Spread Barrel. Gotta remember we're focused. There we go. <clears throat> so 1, 2, 3, 4, um, 5, 6 with the Surge. So we have two Surges to play with. Uh, and we can use one on the power charger to refill our power token stock. And the other one we could recover a strain, but we didn't need to use a strain for anything, so... I think we're just going to... Yeah, we'll just get the power token and then we're good. This guy is defeated. And now we get to trigger everything again, so we're going to use Sidewinder and Opportunist. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and go... One, two with Sidewinder, and then one with Opportunist. Oh, I forgot. I'm, I was supposed to number these guys. I want to start numbering them so I don't have to deal with um, who's who. So this guy's number one, this guy's number two. Um, also, before we did Opportunist, we can do Opportunist with Kotun. So we're going to move her one space with her Opportunist ability since Jin did spend a power token. And then Jin gives up the focus, and I think that's it for Jin Odon. All right, Stormtrooper Elite Reinforce, and last stand will be it'll be focus. So we're gonna start off with uh, Stormtrooper number one, which is this guy. I am gonna quick draw this with Jin Odon, and we are gonna spend the power token. I think we could definitely get the kill, even though we don't have the spread barrel, unfortunately. Actually, you know what? I doubt. I don't think that other guy is going to block us. So let's go ahead and wait off of doing that. So we're not going to quick draw. So this guy is going to move four to attack Dracotta. Okay. Uh, one. And then do they become focused? There are fewer than few figures become focused once per group activation. Okay, one, two. So actually it needs to be here because one, two, three, four. So with focus, he can attack Trocada from here. And um, this is gonna be focused. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Kotun's uh, dig in ability for one strain. And we're gonna add two block. So one, two, three, four. So I have no damage to Dracotta. And then move two to reposition four. That would be like here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. <clears throat> or one, two, three. Uh, but yeah, that makes sense. And then now when the other one activates, this is when I will use Quick Draw with Jin. Because now I have the spread barrel available. And we will spend the power token. Okay, and we get Pierce. So we're doing three right now. If we spread barrel. Oh, and we get plus one damage from Cheap Shot. And then we can spread barrel for one more plus one damage. That's one, two, three, four, seven minus one is. Oh, actually, did we get the kill from just that? <clears throat> Six minus one. Yeah, five damage. So we get the kill on him. And we get to resolve Opportunist and Sidewinder again. I guess the question is, where do I want to go here? I guess I could go grab that crate 
with Jin. I don't know if I want to just keep zooming away from the battle. Uh, one, two, three, and then yeah, I'll probably grab the crate <coughs> next turn and move into position. Okay. Oh, and then we reinforce one of them. Don't want to forget that. So this guy will reinforce uh, to here. <clears throat> okay, so now we're down to Kotun and Drakata. Um, Drakata's got some good options to blast those two stormtroopers. I think Kotun, we want to start moving um, this guy. Uh, something neat that we can do is inch by inch, because that gives movement points. So let's go ahead and activate Kotun here. <clears throat> we need to get um, Lauren over to the terminal. So what we'll do is, let's see, how does that work? Uh, a hero adjacent Lauren can spend one movement point. So we can totally do it outside of activation. So what we're gonna do is, uh, Kotun here is going to use inch by inch. We're gonna give herself a movement point and Drakata a movement point. Now Drakata has to spend it immediately since it's not Drakata's activation. So Drakata's gonna spend it to move Lauren two spaces. So Lauren is, technically underneath Trocada. I'm going to move this. So Lauren's going to move here. And then now Kotun still has one. Oh, I, I do need to use arms distribution. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll give Drakata a damage power token and we'll give Kotun a damage power token. And then we will use, let's see. Let's you take a strain. Oh no, let's just take a move action. And we'll go here. And we'll spend, so we have five movement points. No, we have six movement points. So we have five from our move action, plus one from inch by inch. So we'll move here, we have four left. We're gonna spend uh, one of them to move Lorn onto the, oh, and I forgot there was a crate over there, onto this. Uh, the heroes claim that terminal. Oh, and we get to just continue moving. Lauren mutters softly as his eyes scan the data. And finally he nods, yes, yes, this helps a lot. So, so we have our token and then we'll move him back one space. So that was two. We have four movement points left. Uh, it's weird. I Oh, I didn't put the crate down. Okay, so now we've got, what did we say, four movement points left? Definitely need to use some of them to get Lorne where he needs to be. Um, I guess we're going to the east, so let's spend two movement points to move Lorne. So Lorne will move oops, here, and then we'll spend one more movement point to move Lorne here. So now we had, what did we say? We had six when we started. Went down to five, went down to four. So we have two movement points left. So we'll strain for one movement point. We'll go one, oops, one, two, three to here, and then we'll interact with this crate. And then because of her ability, we get to draw five supply cards instead of just one and choose. So one, two, three, four, five. Mm, Painkillers is pretty good, but it's not good right now. Strain tokens is pretty good for her ability. Emergency med pack's fine. Actually, back to infusion might be the best one here. Although painkillers is pretty good. If somebody gets wounded, we can boost them back up to their full stats. It's just not good right now. Um, shock grenade's not good right now. Oh, you know what? I think we'll grab the painkillers just for later, for when we need it. Okay, got the box. And I think that's it for Kotun. But it looks like the uh, Imperials are out of activation, so we're going to do Drakata. <clears throat> and we're going to remember to use Droid Mastery here. We're going to ready Jax, or Mechanical Master, and he can now activate. 
at the start or end. We're gonna activate at the start because what we want to do is we're gonna go here to uh, three. We're actually gonna go for this officer. I think we can take him out. Ah, oh, unless he dodges. Okay, well, that's fine. And now we'll activate Dracotta. Yeah, we're gonna keep one moving. So we're gonna go one, two, with a move action. We're gonna spend one more movement point to push Lorne here. We'll go three, and now we'll attack this Stormtrooper with our second action. With our repeater cannon, which hopefully we get, uh, oh actually, you know what, let's exhaust this so we can move one more. And now we can attack at range three. And we'll spend the power token. Okay, um, so we've got some options. We'll use Jax to add a damage. And then we have the tactical display to add a surge. And then we can also use dispersal shot to add a surge, which I think makes sense. Uh, sense here. So now we can do Pierce 2. And how much are we doing? We're doing 4. If we Pierce 2, we'll be doing 3. And we could do Shrapnel to do one to the officer as well. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Because that only hits hostile figures, so let's list damage on Jax. So I think we're going to do... Pier surge for Pierce 2, and then double surge for the repeater cannon ability. So with Pierce 2, we're doing 3 damage to the target. And then we're doing Blast 1 automatically with the shrapnel rounds. That hits Jax 2. And then the repeater cannon ability is going to do 1 damage to each figure within 2 spaces of the target, and that includes the target itself. So 1 damage here. One damage here, and then one damage to the officer. Actually, you know what we could do is instead of doing blast one, let's use the shrapnel rounds to redirect the blast to the officer. And now we can do two strain for demolish, and we'll put it... Uh, Put it right here so it doesn't really get in the way of our movement, but it will do one damage to the Stormtrooper and one damage to the Officer, which will defeat both of them. Also does one damage to Jax, so it kind of ends up being the same, but that defeats the Officer. There's still one Stormtrooper left. Alright, and we activated Jax, so that's finished. And I think that's the end of the round. So let's, uh, we don't ready Jax yet. Let's go back to the app. <clears throat> oh, we almost forgot to increase the med packs. End the round. All right, we've got a regular officer and regular jet trooper. Here we go, regular officer down here. Jet troopers up here. And now I'm going to label them. So this guy's gonna be two, cause I just put him down. This guy's gonna be one. Alright, we're in round two. We only have until round six. And then we lose, so we gotta hurry up. <clears throat> okay, round two. So we need to get a move on getting Lorne over to all these terminals. Oh, what am I saying? There is a beautiful blast of smorgasbord that has appeared in front of Dracotta. We'll go ahead and go with Dracotta here. Um, we're going to start off with leave no one behind. We're going to send Lorne on his way towards the east side where Jin is. <clears throat> um, and then I think we can just... Actually, let's hold off on that. I think we actually want to step one space closer. Right? So let's move one space 
closer to Lorne. And that way we have our minimum range. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and attack with our first action the Elite Stormtrooper. And we've got plus one damage with the repeater cannon. Okay, pretty pretty bad roll. Um, <clears throat> not gonna lie, but we've got Jax there to give us the plus one damage with supporting fire. And we've got the tactical display if we need to use that. <clears throat> we need to do four damage or we could deal three damage and use demolish. We'd only need to do blast three. Because these guys have four health each. So I think what we'll do. Uh, we need blast two and we need the shrapnels to go off. I think it's better to just kill the jet troopers and leave the stormtrooper. So let's use dispersal shot and tactical display again to add two surges. And that's going to have us doing one damage to the target. We're going to do blast two. So we're going to do blast one from the shrapnel rounds and then surge for blast one. So that's blast two. One, two, which unfortunately does two damage to Jax, but he's okay. He's got six health now. He can take it. And then we'll use the other two surges for the shrapnel rounds. So again, that's going to do one damage to each of these hostile figures, but not to Jax this time. And then finally, we'll use uh, Demolish again, and we'll put it on the this one here. So that will kill both of these Jet Troopers and do one more damage to the Stormtrooper. Stormtrooper alive, but it's going to kill these two. Uh, also did one more damage to Jax, but he's still alive because he's got plus, plus two health from his X8 upgrade. And then finally we'll use, um, oh we have a second action. So we use leave no one behind. Let's use our second action to rest, and then we'll take a strain move to send Lorne over here. And then our activation will be done. All right, the officer is gonna have somebody attack Jared. Uh, I don't think this stormtrooper has line of sight to Jared. Nope. So I guess he'll have this stormtrooper attack uh, Dracotta instead. It's gonna be three damage to Dracotta. And then we'll move one to attack Jared. He actually can do that. Uh, if he goes here, then he can attack Jared. Yep. So one, two, three, range four. Uh, I'm not gonna spend the token with Jared. Yep. Didn't have to because didn't make accuracy. And then order, move one, cower if adjacent, but he's not adjacent. So I think that is it for the officer. By the way, those black holes that you see on your screen, they're actually the gray objective mission tokens and they represent um, secret passages. So they're kind of like teleporters. All right, I think we go with Jared X. That way we can have uh, Jax finish off that stormtrooper. Jared can finish off the officer, and then we should be good. Um, oh, something I need to check though. Can only a hero spend movement? Rebel figure. A hero, only a hero can do it. Okay, and Slicer's upgrades doesn't work. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and activate Jared next. <coughs> And we'll start off with the Stormtrooper. One, two, three. And we'll give forward momentum, the one movement point to Jax. 
So we're going to start off with an attack targeting the Stormtrooper. Plus one damage. And that is a dead Stormtrooper. Okay, and now Jas can go... Does he get plus one speed? I don't think so. Also, I forgot to trigger... Dang, I forgot to trigger forward momentum again. That's okay. One, two, three, four. I should have used it when Jared got attacked and used parry. Uh, but that's alright. <clears throat> so, Jared, now Jared's gonna activate. He will take a move action. So, we'll go one, two, three, four. And then we'll attack the officer with the gaffy stick. Okay, we got an automatic pierce. And, yep, yeah, that'll be a dead officer. So we've cleared the room. That was our two actions. And I guess he's done for now. So it means it's just our last two heroes. Um, I think we'll go with Kotun, so that Kotun can actually contribute to moving Lorne around, and then Jin can do so as well. Um, <clears throat> we're not going to use arms distribution here. Instead, we're going to use our 5 speed, Let's zoom out a little bit, to go, um, what's the shortest route here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, versus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, oh yeah, that's way shorter. Diagonals, man. <clears throat> 7, 8, 9, and then we'll spend our last movement point to move Lorne two spaces. Actually, no wait, we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to move here with our last movement, and then we'll use inch by inch so that Drokata can move here, and we'll use the one movement point from Kotun to move Lorne here. And now we've got Jin as our last activation. Let's do two movement two strain for two movement points. We'll spend one to move there. We've got one movement point left. We will take a move action. So now we've got six movement points. We'll move one space, we've got five. We'll spend one more to collect the terminal. So we've got four left, right? So we had seven total. We spent two, we spent one. So we have four left. And then let's interact with this uh, terminal here. Yes, this helps a lot, he says. Okay, Emperor's forces are on your heels. Figures in red armor. Oh, wielding long shock lances enter the temple. Elite Royal Guard. Let's see. Oh, shoot, they're elites. That is scary. These guys are nasty. Um, 10 health. Search for plus 2. Search for stun. Plus 1. Evade. Uh, yikes. I got a reward from the last story mission, and the way it works in Imperial Commander 2 is that it lets you um, perform a move and or an act or an attack with one of your heroes whenever somebody like an event happens and I actually think I want to do that with I don't want to get stunned so let's do that um, we'll go ahead and use inside source to perform a move with Jared who is speed four one two three four just catch him up with the rest of the group. <clears throat> Okay, so if Lorne is on a secret passage, Hero Jason can spend two movement points to place him to another space with a secret passage. Damn, it feels bad to have Jin on babysitting duty. I feel like Jared should be the one babysitting him, for sure. Like, I feel like Jin should be quick drawing these guys. So I'll go one, two... Uh... Three, four... Three and then four and then we'll rest. Okay. All right. Ouch. Gonna add a blue die when they hit. So move five to attack Dracotta. So oh, I forgot to label them. One, two, and then one, two. Actually, can just attack from here. Move five. I kind of remember these guys showing up. Um. Oh, lucky, no surges. 
Uh, three damage. Oh, I could have used Dig In, but I don't think I want to. Because I need it for arms distribution, right? And then reposition... Move three to engage as many non-guardian imperial figures as possible. Well, there's nobody else there. So we'll block access to the terminals instead. Um, one, two, three. I don't know. Here, and then we'll attack. And then, actually, I am going to use Dig In here because if I don't take any damage, I won't get stunned. So that's going to be my goal for this Dig In usage. Oh, well, no damage and no surges again, so that's fine. One, two, three. Okay, and that's the end of round two. Now we've got more elite stormtroopers and another officer. Okay, the stormtroopers. And then an officer there. Jax. Alright, I think we want Jared to go escort um, Lorne, and I think we need Jin to go help out with the defeating these royal guards, because the stun is going to be so annoying. Oh, we didn't use mechan- oh, we forgot to use Mechanical Master. Well, that means we can use it now. One, two- actually, yeah, that's that might be good for us, so let's go with that. We'll go with Jin, uh, and we'll start off by exhausting Mechanical Master so we can activate um, Jax. Jax will go one, two, three, four, five. So a double move. And then back to Chin Odon. She will move. Uh, okay, she's strain move. Actually, we, we can strain move. One, two. We can definitely reach this guy. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, let's do that. So he's got a plus one evade, unfortunately. Oh. Alright, we got enough surges, though. Uh, we'll use one surge for plus two accuracy and plus one damage. Um, I think we definitely want a power token here. So let's get... we'll use one surge for damage power token. Do we want a surge power token, actually? So we can get through the surges. And do double surge and we could stun. Actually, yeah, let's get a surge power token. And then we'll use it on the next attack. So this attack we're going to be doing two damage uh, to this guy. And then with Sidewinder and Opportunistic, we're going to go one, two, three. And then with our second action, we will attack again. Oh no, we don't want to be that close. We want to be back here. So, this, so he can't attack us. Um, we'll attack the same guy, though. We're not going to use our power token here because we're going to use it for the next one. Oh, that should have been a pierce, so he actually takes one more from the plasma cell. Okay, and now second attack targeting the same guy. Yikes. Okay. That's alright, because we've got the spread barrel for plus one. We've got Jax for plus one. Um, anything else we can do here? He's stopping the surge. Oh no, I think we're only doing one damage with this. <clears throat> I don't think we want to use the spread barrel here. Or Jax. I mean, it doesn't matter if we use Jax or not. Uh, yeah, that's actually... that sucks. Okay, so this one's gonna do no damage. Um, do we want to just keep moving? One, two... If we had gone here, we could have actually ended up here. So let's be there. Yeah, we'll just be there with the Sidewinder. And then I think we're done with Jin. Okay, another Imperial figure with figure cost three less tax Jared. Uh, another Imperial figure. Well, nobody can attack Jared. None of these stormtroopers can attack anything. None of these royal guards can attack anything. So actually, the uh, order fails. So move three to attack Jared. So we'll actually move one, two, three, 
and then attack Jared. Um, I will spend... Do I want to spend the block? No, I'm not going to spend the block token. Wish I had spent the block token. Okay. Uh, but I will use parry here. Which now triggers... Finally, I'll trigger four momentum with parry to gain one movement point. But before that happens, I will take two damage. Uh, and then I'll gain one movement point to go here, which is great. It's going to help me get up to Lorne faster. And then move... Uh, adjacent... Move, if not adjacent, move forward to reposition 5. So he's going to reposition here. And then another figure, recover 1 damage, adjacent non-focus, and Heights Figure House becomes focus. So he will focus this guy. <clears throat> and that's it for the officer. Yeah, maybe we're supposed to activate Kotun here. Actually, I think we should go for the blast with Drakata. I feel like this is our chance to do it. No, I think Kotun's supposed to pull Lorne out of the tunnel when he comes through. I think that's Kotun's job. So instead, we're going to go with Drakata. Yeah, we're going to go with Drakata and soften up these Royal Guards for Jin to finish them off. So Drakata is going to start off with leave no one behind uh, to move here. That way, we're still out of the line of sight of the Royal Guards. And then we'll go ahead and attack this one with our repeater cannon. Okay. Okay, no surges for us, unfortunately. Although what we can do is we can use the attack display and dispersal shot to get Pierce 2. So we'll use Jax. Then we'll use dispersal shot and tactical display so we can get the Pierce, uh, Pierce 2. Yep, we'll do three damage, and we get blast one automatically. Oh, maybe we should be trying to kill the officer. I think Jax is gonna die. Okay, well, we'll just attack again and see what happens. <laughs> Double evade. Okay. So it looks like we're just doing three damage, and we're gonna blast one. It's gonna kill Jax, unfortunately, but at least we can respawn him with Jared when he activates. 2 damage to this guy, and then I think we just go ahead and spawn the rubble token. 1, 2, does it need to be in line of sight? Nope, within 3 spaces, so 1, 2, I think we'll just put it right here. Or no, let's put it right here. Okay, and that will kill this royal guard, put this guy on 3, and then kill the officer. Alright, so that was Drakata. We've got the Stormtroopers. They're each going to get Pierce 1 or Pierce 2 if they've already attacked the same target. So they're going to move forward to attack Jared. That's actually not bad uh, for us, so let's see. Oh, we didn't label them either. i got to remember to do that. Makes it easier for me later. 2, 3. Okay, so 1... One, two, three, <clears throat> and gonna attack um, Gerard. We're definitely gonna spend the power token on this. So it's gonna be plus one block. I'm just gonna get pierced, so just cancel that. Okay, and we're definitely going to use parry here with the vibro claws to add an evade. So we're going to take zero damage from this attack, and we get to move one space thanks to forward momentum. And then this guy is going to be doing move two to reposition two. So that would be, what, here? The rubble token's kind of blocking his way. I think here makes sense. And then this guy, number two, one, two, three, four. Actually, four here, and he's going to attack Jared again. This time it's going to be Pierce two. 
So thankfully, that's why we use it all up. So three damage, and then we'll move two. And then this guy's gonna go one, two, three, and attack from there. With Pierce two, and it's gonna be five damage. Ouch, one, two, three, four, five. Jared's two health away from dying, or from being wounded. And then they're gonna go... Actually, we're supposed to be blocking access to the terminals. So maybe they would have been gone, going like here, right? One, two, three, four, one, two. Yeah, they probably would have gone like that. One, two, three, Oh, this guy will go here. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we're down to Gerard and Kotun. But I think... No, we need to focus on the objective here. So it takes two movement points to get him in. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we could rest and move, actually. So let's do this. Um, we're going to activate Jack or Jared. We're going to... Let's take two strain to spawn Jax here. <clears throat> then we are going to rest and spend a uh, action or spend a med pack. One, two, three, four, five. Then we're going to take our second action is going to be a move action. So we'll go one, two, three, four, and then we'll take two strain. Uh, right? Did we do that right? It's two movement points to move him, right? No, Jason can spend two movement points to place him as close as possible in another space. Okay. So he will move to here. Through the secret passage. And then I think that's it for Jared. Uh, so now Jax can activate, though. And... Actually, Jax, we should have put Jax here. So you could go one, two, three, and then attack this Royal Guard. Nice. Uh, so that's going to do four damage. Okay. And now it is the Royal Guard's activation. And of course, before the Royal Guard can activate, we're going to use. Jin, Odon to quick draw. We get plus one damage from cheap shot. We're also going to spend the power token. And we're going to exhaust the power charger to make it two surges to get through that evade. And we get also a pierce one from the plasma cell. Oops, not red. Okay. So we can use the spread barrel and Jax as well to add plus one and plus one. I think we can kill him here, right? We've got enough. We actually don't even need to use the spread barrel. Jax is free, so we might as well use him. Uh, we've got three surges, so two going through. There's already three damage, so that's perfect. We will go ahead and recover one strain. We'll use Get Cocky to recover two more strain. And then we'll use the final surge to get a damage power token. Defeats the Royal Guard, which would have given him extra movement, and that was it. So. And now we're down to Jess Kotun. <clears throat> I wonder if I should pass this off to somebody. <laughs> Probably should have passed it off to Jin or somebody. I, mean, I guess it's too late for that. Um. Unfortunately, we have a conundrum. I want to get that crate, and I feel like it's my last chance to do so, but... Oh, we can use Mechanical Master, right? I don't think... Yeah, let's use Mechanical Master here. One, two... Let's do that. Um, we'll have... Well, actually, let's have Jax get it. One, two, three, four, five, six... There. So now, next round, when Jared activates, um, we can use Mechanical... Slicer's upgrades to pick that up. And then one, two, three, four, five, and then we can inch by inch to get that terminal. Yeah, let's do that. So we'll take a move action. 
Um, I think I'm going to pass this off to... Oh, can you only pass it off if they're wounded? If you are healthy, you give this to an adjacent hero. Yeah, I'm going to pass this off to uh, Dracotta. I think Dracotta is going to get wounded first. He's just... They're the least defensive hero I think we have. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four, five with our movement. Thanks to Opportunist. And... Oh, we could have moved one space. Oh no, we were too far away, we are down here. Okay, and then we'll use, um, oh, but we should have used, excuse me, we should have used, we should have used Sidewinder and Opportunist. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, because we can go one, two, three with that. I'm gonna give myself some grace. There's no, there's no reason not to do it. That was just one activation ago and nothing has really happened, so. Uh, so now I'm gonna use inch by inch. Actually, what I should have done is I should put Chin here. She was on the terminal, so Sidewinder and Opportunist is one, two, three. So I'll put Jin there. I'll use inch by inch on Lorne, <coughs> or excuse me, targeting Jin Odon and Kotun. So they each get one movement point. Jin's going to spend hers immediately, and I'm going to use it on Lorne to get the terminal. Hopefully this doesn't trigger something annoying. Okay, good. Okay, just one more terminal to get, and we've got one movement point left with Kotun. So I think we would just move Lorne back onto the secret passageway with that movement point. And do we want to just rest, I guess? One, two. Or do we go for the attack on one of these stormtroopers? I don't know if it's worth it. I think we'll rest. And then let's give a power token to Trocada. And we'll give Kotun a damage power token. Oh, when we rest, we should recover damage. But I guess we don't have any damage on us, so that's fine. Okay, and then that's the end of round three. These, okay, elite riots and an officer. Here comes the riots. And the officer. Okay, round four. All right, so I actually decided to activate Dracotta here. And unfortunately, my mic cut out here, so I'm going to just narrate what ended up happening. Um, so I go with Drakata. I use um, Nobody Left Behind and then take a strain move so I can back up and then target the Stormtrooper uh, with an attack. And I also uh, wanted to target Kotun here to point out. So I spend the, the damage power token I have. And then I'm targeting Kotun here because I wanted to point out that I wanted to be within three spaces of Kotun's opportunist ability, so that when I attack with this power token, Kotun's going to get to move here. Um, so I do spend the power token. Um, I actually forgot to add the plus one damage though from the repeater cannon. So unfortunately they rolled a triple block here, uh, but what I decide to do is use a dispersal shot to minus one damage and plus one surge because by doing that I allow myself to do more damage with pierce too uh, and still be able to blast too because I need to defeat this uh, elite stormtrooper as well so uh, with that I'm able to do so I forgot here I kept, I forgot until a little bit later that I had a plus one damage from the repeater cannon so I did one damage to the target blast two to the other guys but really it should be two damage because of that um, damage power token and the plus one damage from the repeater cannon. I missed the extra plus one damage. So two damage to the middle stormtrooper uh, and then blast two to the other two guys. So now the officers are one. And then I do use opportunist here to move Kotun uh, north towards the crate. And so now we're going to do the second attack. I think this is the part where I realize that I did spend the power token and I forgot to add the plus one damage from it. So two damage to the target. 
And now second attack, another triple block. Oh no, never mind. This was the this was me rewinding to ch check my damage calculations. So did confirm. Forgot to add. There should have been a plus one damage still, even after I used dispersal shot. So here's the second attack. Uh, much better roll this time. A little bit light on surges, but we haven't used tack display here yet on the first attack. So I go ahead and I use um, dispersal shot again to minus one damage and plus one surge. I also use tack display to plus one, so now I've got three surges to work with. Uh, I realized that I again forgot to add repeater damage, so the dispersal shot cancels out the repeater cannon. So the reason I'm now adding all these surges is because this is going to allow me to get the blast two, but also the I'm fully strained out, so I can't use demolish. So I need the two surges to use um, the shrapnel ability on well the repeater cannon ability for double surges. So the blast two takes out the officer. Uh, we do two damage to the target through the the attack, and then blast two to the other stormtrooper, leaves them both at one health. And then with the double surge ability on the repeater cannon, does one damage to each figure within two spaces of the target. So that actually includes the target itself, it doesn't include each other figure, it's each figure within two spaces, which includes the target itself. So we did one damage to each of the four damage uh, stormtroopers there, and then actually did one damage to the one hiding off in the corner as well. And then the uh, stormtroopers do end up activating, and they actually end up going for Kotun here, uh, the remaining one. and they do end up also reinforcing. So, attacking Kotun... And I do end up using Dig In to add plus two blocks. Uh, but I rolled really hot, so five blocks. They surge for plus two damage, so four damage against five blocks. So Kotun takes no damage there thanks to that Dig In ability. And now it is back to me. Uh, I think I forgot to reinforce for a second, but then I do it uh, in a minute here. I do reinforce them, or I rem remember to do that. Okay, so I think we go with uh, Jin next, because I want to be able to quick draw these riots and possibly stun them, even though it's going to be a long range. But we'll go, we'll take a move action. We'll go one, two, three and attack this uh, Stormtrooper. Uh, we are going to spend the power token, which uh, it was on there, it got knocked off for some reason. Oh, because I had to rewind what I was doing. So yeah, we'll spend the, the damage power token. And attack. Okay. Um, I, was, I was hoping to be able to get a power token with this, but Guess not. That's okay. We're getting Pierce 1 from the Plasma Cell. Gotta remember that. <clears throat> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're actually, we have a kill on the dice because of the surge for plus 2. But I think we'll use the Spread Barrel. Um, if we use a Spread Barrel here... No, that doesn't help us, right? We still have to spend the surge for something. So, yeah, we'll get the kill. Oh no, he's got he's only got four health. Yeah, let's do that. Spread barrel, so now we've got four damage and we've got a surge to give her a um, surge power token. And we've got two movement left, this guy's dead. We'll use get cocky to focus. We forgot to reinforce this guy. He should have a buddy here. Oh, that's okay. So yeah, we'll get a power token and a focus with get cocky, and we've got now three movements, so we'll go one, two, three to here. <coughs> um, and we still have two movement points left. So actually, let's go to here. One, two, three, four, five, six, range seven. Um, oh, and this guy's gonna activate first. We could do range 7 with a Surge token. 
Uh, I guess it's not going to get doubled like before, but that's okay. We just need to stun the guy. Alright, we're good there. So that was Jin. And now the riots are going to activate. Move forward to attack Jared. No, she's just out of reach. Haha. -ha. Uh, so they're going to move 8 to reposition 2. So I think 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I think they want to block the terminal, so they're going to go here. And then this guy's going to do the same thing, but I'm going to quick draw him with Jin. I'm going to spend a surge token to add a surge. And I get plus one damage from a cheap shot. So I'm taking two strain. And I am focused. Ooh, which might not help me. It's range seven. Shoot. We're only going to get surge for plus two accuracy. Okay. I guess range, uh, range seven was a little bit too much to ask for there. I guess I got the lowest possible accuracy. So in that case, one, two, we're going to miss and, but we lose the focus, but we still get to use Sidewinder because we don't have to do damage for that. So we'll go here. Um, actually, we're going to go here instead, so we can quick draw that guy too. And then this guy's going to do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Block access to the terminal. Okay, so now we got Jared and Kotun. Um, I guess we should go with Jared so we can ready Mechanical Master so that we can get two activations out of Jax. So Jared is going to activate, I'm going to ready all this stuff. Oh, painkillers should be on Dracotta. Um, we do get forward momentum as well. I think I will give that to Jared though, so we're going to let Jax go. He's going to use Slicer's upgrades. Uh, we'll move him this way so he can use the teleporter later. He's going to interact with the crate, and we're going to get a supply card for Jared, which is going to be the power converter. Uh, don't like that one because you have to spend 50 credits to use it, but we'll keep it in our back pocket in case we need it. And now it is uh, Jared's activation. He's going to get one movement point from forward momentum. I think we're just going to follow Lorne into this uh, secret tunnel. Uh, we can spend three movement points to move to it, so we've still got uh, both of our actions left. So let's go ahead and take a move action. So we'll move, we'll pop out here, and we still have one movement point left. And we'll move, well it costs two movement points though to push Lorne through the tunnel. Uh, we can actually follow him around though. Let's take another move action. So we've got one movement point left. So if we move again, we'll have five movement points. We'll spend two to push Lorne to this part of the tunnel. And then we can actually spend our last three movement to pop out of the tunnel right next to him. So now we're both on the tunnel. Yeah, I think that was good. Okay, so that is Jared. And there's no more Imperials, so we're down to just Kotun. And I think Kotun's probably just going to jump into the tunnel too, or should oh no, Kotun, maybe we'll grab that crate first. <clears throat> How can we do this? So with Kotun, so we'll take a move action. Um, so we've got five movement, so we'll go here, we've got four left, we'll spend three to go down to one, and then we'll pop out <clears throat> on the other side as close as possible. So since Jared's there, we get to pop out here. Uh, those three. So we have one left, so we'll use the last one. Um, actually, we're going to do the inch by inch trick here. We're going to give Jared a movement point. He's going to spend it immediately to move Lorne onto the terminal. And then Kotun has two movement points left, and we'll go ahead and interact with the terminal here. Finally, this is it. I know where it is, says Lorne. 
Before you can even move into the direction he is pointing, shouts and footsteps are heard as more enemies pour in. Oy. Ooh, okay, so the elite stormtroopers are going to fully reinforce back up, and we're going to get an Imperial officer. It's going to deploy right there. And officer right on the rubble token. Okay, so that was one action, though. Um, we could shoot at the Stormtrooper, or we could go for the crate. Oh, we got more story text. There, it has to be over there. Cowering behind an ancient statue, Lorn points into the temple. Take me there. Oh, token. The rebel mission token represents the hiding place. When Lorne is on the space of a rebel mission token, he retrieves the shard. The mission will progress when he retrieves the shard. Oh, nice. We're in the right spot. Okay. Okay, we didn't need that. <clears throat> oh, okay. Well, do we get the crate then, or do we just move him onto the hiding place? Um, let's review. We, start, we took a move action for five. We started off here. So I think we have two movement points left and an action. We could just grab the crate. I think I want to grab the crate and then we'll move him later. Oh, but we didn't strain move yet. We haven't strain moved. So let's save our two movement points and we'll move um, Lauren onto the hiding space. You feel a shiver as Lauren lifts the growing green shard from a hidden compartment. You motion for Lauren to follow you back to your ship, but your attention is drawn away by a malicious cackle. You see the Emperor Palpatine himself. I know where that line is from. <laughs> the Force Unleashed. Uh, okay, Palpatine. Nice. Cannot suffer damage. You have served me well, he says with a satisfied smile. You aren't sure what he means until Lauren begins walking in the Emperor's direction. I live to serve, Lorne says as he walks past. You try to grab him, but find yourself strangely frozen. As for the rest of you, Palpatine says, your service has also been appreciated, but is no longer required. Now, you will die. <laughs> Push Lorne four spaces toward Emperor Palpatine. Okay. One, two, three, four. Place the green token. Okay. Oh, that's yellow. There, this one's green. This is the control token for Lorne. A hero can interact with Lorne to try and reclaim the shard. Apply plus one surge to the results if there is another hero adjacent to Lorne. Oh, I see. So that's wherever Lorne is. It's not there, but we're supposed to click on this when we need to interact with Lorne. Okay, strength to reclaim the shard. Apply plus one search results if there's an another hero adjacent to Lorne. Okay, so we can team up on him. Apply minus two if Emperor Palpatine is adjacent to him. Ooh, okay. So we need to get it back before he gets to Palpatine. Um, I mean, Dracotta can do it. Yeah, okay. So I'm glad we did that. <clears throat> We have two movement points left. We'll go here uh, and we'll grab this crate. We'll do the supply deck. Also, dun dun dun. Lauren was a traitor all along. Who saw that coming? Um, I'll take the adrenal stem. When you draw another card, immediately discard it and draw. When you draw this card, immediately discard it and draw three supply cards. Shuffle one to keep and shuffle and the other two back in the deck. So we could spin the wheel again or we could go for the adrenal stem. I actually think the adrenal stem is pretty good here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take the adrenal stem actually because we can use it twice. Okay. And like, I could actually use it right now. Um, nah, I'll save it. Okay, so that's it for Kotun.
and we've got some activations. Another Imperial figure with a figure cost of three or less that can perform an attack attacks Kotun. So where is that happening? Um, these guys. So this guy's gonna attack Kotun. Okay. I don't know why I haven't given her any block tokens. I feel like that would have been better. Ouch. Three damage. Okay, and then move one to attack Kotun. Can't do that, so we'll move adjacent to another Imperial figure. Oh. His figure is not adjacent. Okay, so I guess he's not going to do any of these. Oh, move through to engage the other Imperial figure with the most health remaining. Uh, he's already doing that, but I guess we'll move him up here. And then Cower. If adjacent to Lorne, push Lorne two spaces towards Emperor Palpatine. Oh, okay. So he's going to do that. And then we'll focus up, I guess, the... Uh, oops, the Riot Trooper has the most health. Okay. And then I guess Palpatine's gonna go. At the start of the activation, the Imperial figure with the highest cost moves two towards the closest rebel. Uh one, two, one, two, one, two. Oh, this guy will move here. And then push learn four spaces. One, two, three. Oy. Oops. I guess we were a little too slow there. Lorne is now uh, next to Palpatine. Actually, we don't even need this. And then, rule through fear, the other Imperial figure with the highest figure cost that is not focused becomes focused. Okay, so that's this guy. Actually, their cost three, I didn't realize. I didn't even think of that, but... Uh, if the other Imperial figure with the highest figure cost that can attack, attacks Rebel closest to Lorne. Into, well, that's gonna be this guy. So, focused. Um, nice. Uh, that's gonna be three damage. One, two, three. And then force lightning. One rebel within six spaces suffers two damage and becomes weakened. If there's another rebel within two spaces of the target, repeat this instruction targeting that rebel. Then limit once per rebel. Ooh, there's some chain lightning. Uh, but there's nobody within six spaces, so... That's not gonna happen, but it will happen once we get close to Lorne. And that's going to be the end of round four. Looks like we have two more rounds to try and get the shard back from Lorne, but now that he is next to Palpatine, and we are all so far away, it is looking like it's going to be very difficult. Alright, so that is going to be the end of round four. Threat has increased, but no new group. So, okay, so we need to interact with Lorne. But he has already moved all the way down to Palpatine in just one round, the round right after we pretty much triggered that event. <clears throat> um, the cool thing is, though, that at least we we can actually, I'm pretty sure, let me check, uh, a hero adjacent to Lauren can spend one movement point to push him up two spaces. So, so as long as he is next to Palpatine, um, he's going to be he's going to be very hard to interact with because uh, of the minus two surge. But if we can push him away from Palpatine, we can get him. Also, it says apply plus one surge to the result. So actually, we might even just have to go with the power of friendship here and just dogpile on him with all of our heroes and just brute force through. We have two more rounds, so we're probably going to have to spend one round getting everybody over there, which we're probably going to get wounded in the, in the meantime. So our surge, our attribute tests are not going to be great. We don't have great strength, unfortunately. Trocada is our best and is green, green, blue, not green, blue, yellow. Our next best is Jared, who's green, green, and then Kotun and Jin are both blue. But uh, we can just apply plus one if we can get all of our heroes next to Lorne. So I think that is going to be the play here. Um, we do have this big group all bunched up that maybe Drakata can take out to make it so we don't all get wounded, but none of our heroes are wounded right now. So, I don't know, I think we just brush over there. Um, what's the fastest way if we go with Jared? Ah, oh, there's so many of them though blocking the way. If we could even clear out one or two of those figures. Um, I think we need to go with Jin because unfortunately she's not gonna be able to quick draw this round. She could actually clear some of these guys out and move through them and get some strain back. So I think Jin is going to be our 
person to start first. Although if we go with uh, Kotun, we could give her a power token and then get some movement that way as well. Maybe that's what we need to do. All right, all right, all right. Let's think here. Because if we could get a bunch of opportunist movements from both Jin and Kotun, that would be really good. Um, I think what we'll do is... Oh, with Kotun we can also focus. Oh, we could focus Jin. That would be really good. Okay, I think we're going to go with Kotun first. Let's see, do we have um, Mechanical Master available? We do, so we could actually go with um, Jax as well. Six, although he's not going to be able to really get up to help much, but we're going to use it anyway. We're going to go ahead and use Mechanical Master here uh, to ready and activate Jax, who is going to... Oh, he needs to go get the crate. That's what Jax is supposed to do. So let's double move Jax. Um, I think he is still speed uh, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, and then he'll be able to get that on the last round, I think, that crate. Okay, and then this is uh, Kotun activating. So we're going to go ahead and I think we're going to use, let's see, we'll refresh inch by inch. Um, we're going to use arms distribution. No, we're going to use arms distribution after so that we can get a block token. Um, so I think what we should do then is inch by inch, different three spaces, one, two, so Jared's on this space, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, why did I put that there, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, versus one, two, three to here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, it's actually faster for him to go through the tunnel. Um, Okay, let's just go ahead and take a shot at the Stormtrooper here, and we'll spend the power token. One, two, three, with a red and a yellow, um, black. We're definitely going to reroll this red with her Alliance Efficiency ability. Um, so what are we looking at? One, two, three, four, uh, the Surge token. That's a bummer. Um, one, two, three. So I think we're just doing four damage. One, two, three, four. Which is not bad. Um, and then, do we just move? Maybe we should have moved. One, two. Oh, I wish we had killed that guy. Is there any way to kill him here? I don't think so. No, no, no way to kill him. Okay, but well we need to spend the token for an attack anyway. So let's go ahead and inch by inch uh, to move Kotun. Give her an extra movement point, and then with speed five, we're gonna move, take a move action. So we're gonna go one, two, so we have six movement points. Three, four, five, six. And then I guess we strain move. Uh, or do we just kill... Should we just kill this Stormtrooper? Yeah, let's just kill this Stormtrooper, actually. So we're not going to take a move action. We are going to attack the Stormtrooper. Not going to spend the power token. Yep, so that's going to do two damage. Dead Stormtrooper. And then... Uh, we'll inch by inch, and now we can actually move Jin up one space. We'll move Kotun up one space, and then at the end of the activation, we will take a strain. Oh, that's right. We were supposed to use shoot. We were supposed to use that ability, that item card, Adrenal Stim. So you know what we can actually do is we can um, take a strain for a movement point, and we can actually use Adrenal Stim twice by depleting Alliance Deficiency or efficiency, excuse me. Two, three, so we'll focus Kotun and we'll focus Jin here. So that was pretty good. Okay, so that's gonna be Kotun's activation. 
And then, oh, at the end of the activation, we definitely want to give a power token to Jin Odon, and we'll give another power token to Kotun. Okay, and so now it's going to be the Empire's activation. The officer, another figure with th three or less, can form attack targets. Targeting Dracotta. Okay, so that's going to be the Riot Trooper. And this might wound Dracotta. Dracotta's going to take three damage. Okay, not wounded. And then move one to attack Dracotta, which he cannot do. I should have quick drawn on that one. So move three to engage the other Imperial figure with the most health remaining. I mean, one, two. Okay, and then this guy will become focused. Now it is back to us. So we've got Jin, Jared, and Dracotta. I mean, I think Dracotta needs to get out of there before they become wounded. But if the problem is if they go, well, well, Dracotta actually has the the thing that Kotun gave them, the um, the painkillers. So we actually don't have to. Okay. Yeah, I think it is going to be Dracotta, and I think we're just going to have to get him down to Lorne. So, no attacking. Um, I think we should rest, use a med pack, and then strain move over to Lorne. One, two, three, four, five. We'll use up our med pack. And then one, two, three, four. Strain move. and then we can actually leave no one behind and get right next to Lorne. So, I think that is the play. Okay, and now it's the Empire's turn. Palpatine, Dark Rage. Start of this activation, the other Imperial figure with the highest cost gains one damage power token. If that figure has the melee attack type, it gains two damage power tokens instead. Okay, um, let's see. So that's going to be, we've got just a bunch of three cost figures right now. I think it's going to be, it'll probably focus on the melee, right? So let's give it this to this guy. And then rule through fear, the other Imperial figure with the highest figure cost that is not focused becomes focused. Oh, Master of Puppets, push Lorne four spaces towards this figure. Okay, we did that. Um, let's go ahead and push Lorne four spaces away from the rebels. I think that makes sense to make things a little more difficult. Yeah. And then um, action. Other imperial figure with the highest figure cost is not focused becomes focused. So we're gonna have one of these stormtroopers become focused. The other imperial figure with the highest figure cost that can attack attacks the rebel closest to Lorne. Okay. So the closest figure to Lorne is gonna be Tracotta. Otherwise, it's gonna be Jin. So I think that'll be the focused stormtrooper. It's going to attack Jin. Um, we'll definitely use Dig In here with with uh, Kotun. I'm kind of regretting that attack now, even though I got rid of that Stormtrooper. So plus two block. Let's see if we dodge. We did not. Jeez. Okay. Well, at least we stopped the the one surge. So we're gonna take three damage with Jin. And then the rest of it, the other Imperial figure with the highest figure costing attack attacks. Okay, we did that so much. Force Lightning, one rebel within 66 six spaces, suffers two damage and becomes weakened. Okay. Alright, so now we're down to Jared and Jin. I think we have to go with Jared next if we want to get use out of um, Mechanical Master. So let's do that. So yeah, we want to get him up to the crate. So one, two, three, four. Four. Let's go here actually. Five, six. 
and then, not that it really matters, and then we'll go with Jared. Uh, we get one movement point for forward momentum. We will go through the tunnel with a move action. So we'll take a move action. We have five speed, five movement points. We'll spend three to go here. We have two left. We'll go one, two. We'll take another move action for four movement points. One, two, three, four. And then we'll take two strain to go one, two to there. And I think that's it for Jared. Okay, the stormtroopers are gonna go. They're gonna reinforce and they're gonna become focused. This guy's three, so this guy's gonna go first and he's gonna attack Jin Odon. Uh, do I wanna just quick draw that guy? No, I'm gonna quick draw the other guy. Oh, but I can use my quick draw holster. I need to use that. So let's do that because we're gonna get plus one on the other one. So we'll take one strain. Uh, we'll deplete the quick draw holster to declare an attack targeting uh, this stormtrooper, but let's hold off on spending the power token. I forgot I had to use the power charger already. Okay, well, let's roll our dice. We are focused at least. We'll just do this. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, so one, two. Um, we do get Pierce one from the plasma cell. Six minus two is four damage. Shoot, we're one short. Um, we don't have a reroll or anything like that. Okay, well, we'll do four damage to this guy then. And then we go, oh, we get to use Opportunist and Sidewinder and we get to move right through that. Um, I think we actually, do we interrupt line of sight that way? Does this guy still have line of sight? That's something neat that I never really thought about. Yeah, you can on the lamb, so sick. That guy doesn't have line of sight. So that attack actually ends. I didn't know you could you could on the lamb with just corset cards. That's pretty cool. Um, okay, so his attack ends, and then we're gonna move two to reposition four, but we wanna block we wanna be adjacent to Lorne, so one two is as far as he can go. And then that sucks because now we can't quick draw. So this guy's gonna activate and he's gonna come and get um, Jin. So one, two, three, and attack Jin. So maybe we should have done that in the opposite order, huh? We should have quick drawn and then done the quick draw holster. Yeah, too bad. Uh, he is focused. Come on, dodge. All right, four damage. Could have been worse. And then he also wants to be adjacent to Lorne, so he's going to go one, two. Okay, and now it's down to just Jin Odon. So we're ready all these cards. Oh, and then we need to reinforce. I always forget to do that. So we'll reinforce somebody that wants to be adjacent to Lorne. Okay, so down to Jin, but we do want to use Mechanical Master here. So we can activate uh, Jax, and Jax is going to use Slicer upgrades. So he's going to move one and then grab this crate. So now we've got all the crates from the map, and we get to draw one supply card, which is going to be a shock grenade. Not really what we wanted. We were able to get that grappling hook there, but that's okay. Okay, so do we just start killing stuff and then we can get next to Lorne, or should we try to get next to Lorne now? We could also try and push Lorne over to um, Dracotta and... Actually, yeah, that might be the way to go, right? One, two, three, four, five. Strain move, six, seven. Then we don't have enough to actually push him and interact with him. So maybe we just keep killing stuff. Maybe, like, kill these stormtroopers. Because then we can use Get Cocky and Sidewinder. So maybe kill a stormtrooper, move around, and then... No, I think we'll just go for the stormtrooper. Save up our resources um, so we don't have to exhaust everything. We're going to start off uh, declaring attack on the stormtrooper here with Jin. Okay, this is great. So we've already got enough damage on the dice, so we have the surges to do what we want. We're going to recover a strain with one of the surges, and we're going to get another power token with our supply pack, or our 
power charger. And I just realized we can use our supply pack here. We're gonna deplete this card to recover two damage. This guy is dead. Uh, we're going to use get cocky to become focused. And we're gonna use sidewinder and opportunist to move. One, two, three. So now I think we just go for Lorne, right? We just go ahead and take our move. One, two, three. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I think we want to be all adjacent to him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we could have him, we could put Lauren right here. Yeah, let's do that. One, two, so we're move, taking a move action. We have five speed, so we have one, two, three. So we have two movement points left. We'll spend one to push Lorne two spaces. Then we'll take two strain for two movement points. Uh, we'll go... Oh no, this doesn't work, does it? Hmm. Well, we want to get him away from Palpatine. So one, two, or to here. And then push Lauren two spaces that way. Yeah, I like that. Okay, I think we're done with everybody. And we have one more round to go. Uh, and we have the Riot Troopers to go as well. At the end of this group's activation, each figure in this group moves two to engage as many non-guardians. Then each adjacent non-guardian gains one block token. Okay, move four to attack Jared. Do they even have any attacks here? I think they only can go for Kotun. This one starts first. He can definitely not get to Jared. But he can get to Kotun, so he's going to go for Kotun. Going to be focused and spend a power token. Damn, does Kotun have dig in? Nope, so this is going to be... A pretty big hit. Oh, you know what? She was supposed to take a um, a block token, not a damage token. So we're gonna spend that block token from earlier, and they're gonna spend the damage token. Oh god! <laughs> All right. So we're gonna take seven damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, and she suffers a strain. And then move two to reposition two. Oh, I see. They only push Lorne if he's a, if they're adjacent. So they're going to try and get back to Lorne. And then this one's going to go for Kotun as well, also focused. So it's not looking good. Uh, four, five, six, seven. Minus one is six, so yeah, Kotun is going to be wounded. And then we'll move two. Okay, and none of this defender stuff is going to happen. There's no non-guardians adjacent to them, so push Lauren, and it's not going to happen because they're not adjacent. <laughs> All right, so we're hitting the last round here. Stormtroopers are going to reinforce another one. And we just need to reclaim the shard from from Lorne. So what's the best way to do this? Um, go with Jin here. I think we can just do this right now, right? If we just activate Jin, like we just do it. So let's just do it. We'll go with Jin, Odon. I think we got this because we managed to push him away from Palpatine at just the right moment. So we'll go move action one, two, th or no, let's go one, two, three. And now we'll interact with Lorne. Plus one to the surge rate if there's another hero. Oh, you can't, you don't actually get for each hero, it's just if there's another hero, you get plus one. Okay, well, crap. It's going to be blue, green, and then plus one surge. Um. Yeah, let's do it. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, just one. Okay, holds the shard with more strength than you ever expected from a scrawny scholar. Place one strain token on Lorne for each surge result gained. Oy, okay. Uh, that was one, two, three. We still have... 
two movement points left if we want to go quick draw those guys. <clears throat> so let's go to here. And then we've got quick draw sights on two of them at least. All right, so that is going to be it for Jin Odon. She readied everything though. And it's the Emperor's turn. Here we go. Tempt. The hero with the least focus dice or, is test, or insight. Test insight. If he or she fails, that hero attacks another rebel of his or her choice. After this attack, the attacker gains two. Oh, this is like just like Lure of the Dark Side that we made for ICP. That's awesome. Um, the lowest insight. Um, let's see. Jin has got blue green. Uh, Kotun's got good insight. Blue green, blue, blue. I guess blue blue is technically the lowest. So, oh yeah, it failed. Um, attacks a rebel of their choice. I will attack Jin so that I don't get hit by my own blast. So Jin takes two damage from the repeater cannon. Push Lorne four spaces towards this figure. Shoot. One, one two, three, four. To there. Okay, the other Imperial figure with the highest figure cost is not focused, becomes focused. So let's say this guy will be focused. Um, force lightning. Oh, the other Imperial figure with the highest figure cost that can attack. Attacks the rebel closest to Lorne. Oh, so that's going to be actually this guy. So he's going to attack Jin. Really, he should be focused, so let's make him focused. And Jin's going to take four damage. One, two, three, four, which unfortunately uh, is going to wound her. Shoot. And means she's not going to be able to quick draw. Oh, we gotta put that. And then, <clears throat> Force Lightning, one rebel within six spaces suffers two damage and becomes weakened. There's another rebel within two spaces of the target, repeats its destruction targeting the rebel, so once per rebel. So, yeah, so that's gonna hit all of these guys. So, two damage and weaken. Two damage. Uh, two damage and weaken. And I think that's it. Okay, so we need to mark that Jin has been wounded. Kotun has also been wounded. Oh, we could still get there, right? We just need to get him adjacent to one other rebel. So, Drakata's the closest and is the fastest, I think, because Drakata's not strained out like Jared is. Oh, yeah, we're testing strength. Okay, so let's go with Drakata. Um, we're gonna go. So, I think we want move action two strain and leave no one behind so seven movement and that will be here so we have five movement left spend one to move Lorne here All right so we have four movement left spend one more we have three movement left to move Lorne here yeah because we were right here so one two three four five six. So we only had to take one strain. <clears throat> so that was one action. And now we're going to interact again with Lorne. For our second action, we get plus one because of there being um, Jared next to us to help. We get plus one for the surge that's already, the strain that's already on there. And then Drakata is rolling Blue, green, green for strength. Oh my god. Oh, come on. Okay, well, let's see what happens. Oh, still holding on to it. Okay. So uh, I think we only add one more strain token because we don't count the one that was already on there. Oh, actually does weakened? Weakened doesn't affect attribute tests. I feel like I just looked this up recently. While attacking and while defending. Yeah. Okay, but we will discard the weakened condition. And that's the end of... Uh, that's the end of Tricotta's activation. 
figure head. Each imperial figure within three spaces of the figure of this figure, maybe, discards one harmful contingent that those that did not recover two damage. <clears throat> well, nobody's got harmful conditions or damage, so that's fine. If the figure costs three or less, can perform attack targets Drakata. Um, nobody can attack Drakata. Nobody can attack anybody. Oh, this guy can attack Jared, so we'll do that. Uh, Jared has no defense tokens, and he is weakened. So, Stormtrooper attacking Jared. Jeez. Okay, nothing. Um, I think, am I going to die from that? I have 14 health, so if I take 5 damage I die, but let's go ahead and just exhaust the Gaffy Stick to add a block, and we'll take 3 damage. 1, 2, 3. Okay, and then move 1 to attack. Alright, here comes the attack on Jared, who is weakened. No, he didn't have line of sight, so he should not have attacked. Um, so in that case, it would have been move three to engage, but he's going to reposition to <coughs> be adjacent to Lorne. No, he can't get adjacent to Lorne, so he'd move three to engage. Figure with the most house remaining, so one, two, three to there. <coughs> And then this guy will become focused. Alright, I think this is our last chance to try and win this. It is with Jared, because I don't think Hotun can make it down there. Wounded. Uh, she's too slow. Right now she is... So, speed 4. One, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4. Man, we really screwed ourselves with that uh, rubble placement. But, uh, yeah, we're going to have to try and do this with Jared. Uh, before before uh, Lorne gets away. So, Jared is going to activate. I think we can interact with him twice, though, so I think we should have it here. Uh, our strength is green-green, which is not bad. So, interact... So we've already got two successes on there. We're going to get one more, thanks to Drakata also being adjacent. And then we got one more, so it's going to be um, four total. You wrench the sphere fragment from the traitor Lorne's hands and run as fast as you can from the furious Emperor Palpatine. When you finally reach a location where you can regroup, you look down at the shard you hold in your hand, panting from exertion. You feel the force energy emanating from the glowing shard, sending tingles through your arm. A sense of power and terror overcomes you from simply holding it. You must get the shard off the planet and out of the Emperor's reach. And the rebels win! Yes, Oof, that was close right at the end there. <clears throat> the heroes receive the Bardotten Shard reward card. It says, remember this works differently when playing with Imperial Commander. Refer to the rules change section of the wiki. Each hero receives 2 XP and 100 credits per hero. Great! That means we're going to be able to get all of our best XP cards. And then place the story mission card Capital Escape into play. So we did it, we managed to get the shard away from Emperor Palpatine, and uh, we're able to get it out of there. I realized I was a little more zoomed out, but it, it, the uh, things did get kind of spread out there at the end, so hopefully it, it made it easier to follow. And uh, thanks again everybody for watching. We're going to do the Rebel Reward stage, the last Rebel Upgrade stage for this campaign. Maybe we'll do a little recap, that'll be fun, and then it will be the finale. And uh, yeah, it'll be fun. Thanks for, for watching, everybody. Post your uh, what your favorite mission has been so far. Uh, post in the comments if you're enjoying this, if you think this is fun and we should do another one. Uh, do another one after this. And uh, we'll see you next time.